Hi, Pastor Brian Larson here. You know, I've been sharing why I am absolutely convinced that this, this book, the Bible, is indeed the Word of God. And if you've uh, listened to any of these previous little spots that I've had on here, uh, I've shared with uh, just the absolute uniqueness of this book. It's the most unique book in human history in just the way it's laid out and, and has been given to us. And secondly, we looked at history and, pro and archaeology and saw that this book is perfectly accurate, historically proven out by archaeology. And then thirdly, and this is so big, this book, the Bible, dares to prophesy. There's a, about one third of it is prophetic. And it is 100% accurate so far. Prophecies that have been fulfilled after the writing of this book. So to me, that, that, that proves this must be the word of God. But there's another reason that just, re, just resounds in my own heart and mind. And that is the power of this word to literally change people's lives in a positive way. Um, Moses told the people of Israel regarding this word that this is not a futile thing, but this is your life. And Jesus in the New Testament quoted Deuteronomy when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he was referring to this book. You know, there's a Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to pierce between soul and spirit, between joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the very thoughts and intent of the heart. It gets in there like nothing else. And I like what it says in Romans 10, 17, when we're told that um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, what, a, what a, a powerful word we have here that can literally change lives. Couple of examples that I've heard. I've heard hundreds of them. My own life is an example of that. But... Um, there was a lady in our fellowship uh, was sharing recently with me that she, in her earlier years, was on a quest to really know what the truth was. So much so that she traveled to India and spent months in India seeking out gurus and, and things like that. She was trying everything out there. She was trying New Age stuff, Hindu stuff, you know, she looked into Islam. She was looking into all these things, looking for something that she could really grab hold of and say, now this is the truth. And when she finally kind of went back to where, you know, the, the roots of her culture, where she went back to the Bible, and once she got into that, immediately in her heart, she knew this is the word of God. And it literally transformed her life, gave her peace, contentment, joy in her heart. And she says, I know the truth. And as Jesus said, the truth has set me free. You know, during the Vietnam War, that Vietnam era, there's a story about a, a a church in Saigon, which is now Ho Chi Minh City, but it was Saigon at the time, a, a Bible-believing church. And uh, one Sunday morning, this big limousine pulls up and a fella gets out and the people recognized that this guy was what would be uh, the chief justice of the Supreme Court in Vietnam, in South Vietnam. And he went in and he sat in on the church service. And he got up and left, jumped in his limousine and off he went. And people thought, what was that about? Well, they had a Sunday evening service, which was smaller and gave opportunity for people to share. And he came back Sunday evening. And during that sharing time, he shared with the people there. He said, you know, I have really felt an emptiness in my heart and I've wanted to know what is the truth here? And he began uh, his own personal search and he got hold of a Bible and he began reading the Bible and he said, like nothing before, this is the word of God. 
Is there, is there anybody that believes this? Are, are there any people that are followers of this? And he was told that, you know, there was this little church in Saigon that, that uh, apparently did. And so that's why he went and came. And he said, that night he said, I was so glad to find others that realized that this is the word of God. And he came to faith in Jesus Christ through this word as his Lord and Savior. One other example I'll never forget. Um, you know, the Gideon's organization just hands out scripture, Bibles, wherever and whenever they can. Usually hotel rooms, you know, you'll see a Gideon Bible in there. Well, there's a story that came out of Egypt, as a matter of fact, some years ago, when Gideons were passing out Bibles in Aramaic, you know, there in Egypt. Well, a lot of the people would get these things. What is this? So oh, this is the Christian Bible. Oh, oh, I want nothing to do with it. There was, there was a fellow that sold on the street little, little candies. And so he thought he, he got one of these. He would rip out a page of that little New Testament and use it to wrap his candy, you know, and give it away. He felt this is a good way to just rip up this book. And so that's what he did. Well, what ended up happening, he was given pages of God's word out to people that were coming by and buying his candy. Where there's a story about a guy who bought one of those and he was walking down the street, took the wrapper off, didn't really take a look at it. He wanted to eat his sucker. And he was walking by kind of a, you know, a high wall and he just threw that wrapper over the wall. Well, on the other side of the wall, there was a fella walking along that was just troubled about his life and wondering, what's it all about? And this piece of paper came floating down in front of him. And so he went down and he picked it up. He says, what is this? And he recognized these were words about God. These were words about life. And immediately he says, this is, this is from God. Where did this book come? Where did this page come from? He had no idea. So he went around with that page and he went around different people and places and that. Do you know where this comes from? Most people had no clue. But finally he saw somebody says, you know what that is? That's a page out of the Christian Bible. And he went and got himself a hold of a Bible. And that's how he came to faith in Jesus Christ through this word. Hey, folks, there's no getting around it. This is a powerful word. Now, I know there are people that will read it, and at least parts of it, or some, eh, forget it, you know. But there are many others who read it and realize this is the word of life. You know what my counsel is to you? I'm convinced it is. I'm convinced it's the one book in this world that is truly the word of God, and it's the only book that is. And I would just encourage you to pick up this book if you haven't got a copy, get one <clears throat> and, and read it and believe it because here's where the truth is. This is the truth that is from God. And if you, if, if, if you follow this book, you can't go wrong. I am telling you, you can't go wrong. But if you don't, you're going to end up going wrong. So... Hey, God loves you and he has sent you a personal letter because he loves you so much and he wants you to know the truth about life and about salvation and about eternity. And so uh, get into it. Well, may the Lord bless you as you take a look and you study this book yourself. And we'll talk to you later. God bless. My Savior.